let's actually start with why you would want to have carbohydrates. I think that my example gives you some idea of why you wanna have carbohydrates in your diet. And that is hormonal health. People generally almost always see their hormones get better. They feel more vital. They have better libido when they include carbohydrates in their diet. Now, sleep also gets better significantly for most people with carbohydrates in their diet. On strictly carnivorous diets, sleep disturbance is very, very common, as are muscle cramps. Let's talk about the muscle cramps for a moment. Insulin is a peptide hormone released from the beta cells of your pancreas. Insulin gets demonized like crazy, but in fact, insulin is a important vital hormone for healthy human life. And what we know, what I learned, and I've spoken about this many times in the past, is that when you eat carbohydrates of any type, but I would prefer honey, fruit, as I've said, your insulin goes up and your blood sugar will go up. Now, that's a good thing for so many reasons. That insulin signaling is anti-catabolic. It's not anabolic, but it's anti-catabolic, which means it preserves the muscle tissue of your body. It will improve your antioxidant status. There are links between insulin signaling and glutathione, which is the body's master antioxidant. And at the level of the kidneys, that insulin signaling is essential, I would say indispensable for preservation, that is resorption of electrolytes. Sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, magnesium. That insulin signaling at the level of the kidneys is essential for that. I think that there are thousands of pounds of electrolyte supplements sold, perhaps unnecessarily, to people who are too low carb and they are losing their electrolytes because they don't have enough insulin signaling at the level of their, at the level of their kidney. Because they don't have enough insulin signaling at the level of their kidneys. Now, this happened to me, this has happened to so many people, so perhaps this is you. So there's really no argument that this insulin signaling is beneficial for humans. On the other side of the coin, those in the low carb space who I respect will sometimes argue that most insulin resistance is insulin induced, meaning that hyperinsulinemia, eating more carbohydrates spikes your insulin and this leads to insulin resistance. This is just false. There's no good evidence for this in free living humans. In order to create this in a human, you need to put a special clamp on them, a U-insulinemic hyperglycemic clamp. You need to do crazy things to humans. You need to pump them full of exogenous processed sugars via their veins to get this to happen. I suppose you could recreate a situation in which your insulin is consistently high by eating Cheetos 24 hours a day. You could never sleep or mainlining sugar all day and most of the night. Because if you're sleeping and you're not eating, your body's not gonna have that sugar coming in and your body will go back to some level of normalcy from just pure sugar. I've spoken about the rice diet in the past, but this is an example of a diet used by Walter Kempner in the 40s and 50s, I believe, to cure diabetics. And these people were morbidly obese, hundreds of pounds overweight, and he fed them white rice, and pure cane sugar, and they lost weight, and they become insulin sensitive. And then after liberalization of the diet, they remain healthy and their diabetes does not return. In fact, this is such a striking study that I'll show the study on YouTube so you guys can see it. Here is one of the studies published by Walter Kempner, the effect of a rice diet on diabetes mellitus associated with vascular disease. And I think that if you read the study, you will see that the effects were pretty astounding. So. The benefits are striking. They are significant improvements in insulin sensitivity, which is persistent even after the liberalization of the diet. I'll show one more image on YouTube. This is a picture of weight loss from people on this diet. And there are many more examples of like this from Walter Kempner's studies. And the, the findings are striking. I mean, the literal change in shape of these humans is massive from uh, significantly obese humans, and there's even more striking photos that are out there on the internet if you look for this, to very skinny humans on a diet of pure, I would say, carbohydrates from rice and sugar. Now, this I think flies in the face of the idea that blood glucose spikes are causing you to be fat or that blood glucose spikes from carbohydrates will cause you to become diabetic. And that is my point in saying this. So where are we left? 
I hope that we're left with the appreciation for the fact that having carbohydrates in your diet has value and that we should not fear these blood glucose spikes, nor should we fear the insulin that comes along with them. Now, I know there will be many people in the audience who are thinking, I'm obese. Uh, is this okay for me? Uh, I'm diabetic. I'm pre-diabetic. I have a family history of diabetes. What should I do? So certainly if you are metabolically healthy, including carbohydrates in your diet will improve your performance, your sleep, your mood, your libido, and your muscle, I would say, maintenance and muscle gains, undoubtedly in my opinion. And I believe that for those of you who are pre-diabetic, obese, looking to lose weight, having some carbohydrates in your diet is also valuable, but that you should scale those carbohydrates based on your activity levels. I think a lot gets made of the fact that I've publicly said that I'm eating two to 300 grams of carbohydrates a day, and then people don't always frame that in the proper way that I am also surfing two to three hours a day and skating and lifting weights or swimming in a river. And, and I'm pretty active for a human. I would say I exercise every single day because I like to exercise, not because I'm feeling in, there's an imperative to do that. So the amount of carbohydrates I eat as a metabolically healthy, fairly muscular 46 year old man may not be the right amount of carbohydrates for you. But I think that for most of you, having some carbohydrates in your diet will be of significant benefit. How much should you have in your diet? I think that the lower end for humans is probably around 100 grams of carbohydrates a day. I do not think that you as a human should go below 100 grams of carbohydrates. That's everyone. If you're obese, if you're pre-diabetic, if you're diabetic, having 100 grams of carbohydrates in your diet a day, I think is the bottom end. And as I've shared in the past, I won't share the study now, but I've done many times, there are studies in diabetics given 125 to more than 125 grams of honey per day who improved their insulin sensitivity based on fasting glucose metrics and other metrics of insulin sensitivity. So again, there are healthy ways to be carbohydrates. And I think that another point that I wanna make in this podcast is that we must not conflate research done on pure fructose, on processed sugars, especially high fructose corn syrup, with whole food sources of carbohydrates like fruit or like honey. 